we want everything when we want it at that time. What we fail to realize is that we have God and we're fortunate to have someone that cares about us that we can trust. We need something and from God and we always ask him for it. We're his servants and we should trust him and that he will keep his promises. Um, one of the texts that I found in the Bible was 2 Samuel 7, 28. And the text says, O sovereign Lord, you are God. Your words are trustworthy and you have promised these good things to your servant. God promised that one day he would return to this earth and take us to heaven to be with him. We go through so much in our lives and we realize that no, and sometimes nobody else is there for us and we sometimes forget that God is there for us and he's the one that we should trust when nobody else is there. Psalms 9:10 says, those who know your name will trust in you for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. The topic of trusting God is a very big topic and it doesn't just mean trust him with your life or trust that he will help you in your time of need. It's our job to trust and believe that his love for us is real. He loves us and would never want to lie to us, and he will prove it when he comes back for us. Psalms 13:5 says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices for your salvation. Trust in God is important not only so that we can, uh, it's not just important so that we get something whenever we want it. Trusting God is important so that we can actually learn something and learn to trust that he will help us not only in our time of need, but even when we don't ask for it. Good evening, church. Um, one thing we went over in our guide class is health. Third John chapter one, verse two says, beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be good in health, just as our soul prospers. One of my favorite aspects of health that we went over in class was exercise or working out. By a show of hands, can I see who in the audience works out? Daddy? <laughs> working out is, a very is very essential to our bodies. Why is it important? Have you, have you ever heard of the expression, use it or lose it? It's true. If you don't use your body, you will surely lose it. Your muscles will become flabby and weak. Your heart and lungs won't function efficiently, and your joints will be stiff and easily injured. Inactivity is as much of a health risk as smoking. It doesn't matter what you do, whether it's push-ups, sit-ups, or a one-mile jog. Make sure you get as much physical activity as you can every week. The Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? May God help us become fit not only physically, but spiritually as well. Good evening and happy Sabbath, church. Um, we went over various topics in our guide class, and one topic that stuck out to me the most was having a relationship and building a relationship. Um, does someone want to define a relationship for me and what it means to you? Anyone? Help one another? Caring for one another. Yeah. Um, in our guide class, we had to come up with um, 10 guidelines for being a good life companion. And we came up with the list of 10 guidelines. And number one, we said was respect. It develops good communication between people. They don't talk over each other. They take the time to have meaningful conversations and they always listen to one another. Number two, responsibility. It's important to have responsibility so that we know that each of us are caring for each other. Number three, being able to adapt. Without adapting, we wouldn't be able to get along with one another or be willing to sacrifice with one another. Number four, honesty. It builds trust between each other. Number five, love. It creates a strong and a long-lasting relationship where no one will go astray. Number six, patience. 
It causes us to be humble, patient, and to be able to tolerate one another or bear with one another in love. Number seven, forgiving. It lets go of unhealthy situations and gets rid of any animosity between each other. Number eight, friendship. It lets go of friendship so that we can assist and strengthen each other by helping each other grow and improve. Number nine, supportive. To have each other's back when one is in trouble. And number 10, last but not least, which is the most important, is to have a relationship with God. Developing a relationship with Jesus is very similar to developing a relationship with anyone else here on earth. The more time you invest, the deeper and more fulfilling the relationship becomes. By spending time with him, we learn to have a Christ-like character. And I want to share a verse with you, 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. This verse defines the way we should have a relationship with God. And not just with God, but with everyone here on earth. And all of these qualities make up the character of God. And when we have them, we learn to have a Christ-like character. And through this character, we can be a blessing to anyone we have a relationship with. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. What is an object lesson? The dictionary defines an object lesson as a striking yet practical example of some principle or idea. This year in our guide class, one of the things that we discussed was the significance of object lessons. Our class read The Desire of Ages, chapter seven, which focuses on Christ as a child. The chapter describes how Jesus' parents were also his teachers, since he didn't go to the same schools as the rabbis and Pharisees. However, Jesus learned and gained far more insight because God taught him through his parents by examples of nature and by studying the Bible. Jesus grew and also spoke in, in forms of object lessons, also known as parables. For example, in Luke chapter 15, verses three to six, if you would turn with me, Luke chapter 15, verses three to six. It says, and he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he laid it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. This verse shows a connection to everyday life as an example for us. And if you go to verse seven of chapter 15, it says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more over than 99 just persons who needed no repentance. Jesus made even the simplest of people understand God's love for us. He, he made us understand through his parables. And if object lessons were used back then, so many years ago, bringing others to the foot of the cross in this day and age can be used through object lessons as well. They can, um, they can still be used in this day and age so we can bring many more lost sheep to repentance. Amen.